Hello, in this video we're looking at practice exercises again. In this particular episode we're looking at hard surface techniques. These exercises are all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where all the courses are free from beginner right through to advanced levels. As per usual, I'll show you the shape, then you have a go at making it, and then I will show you how I would go about making it. Okay, so this is the first shape. The tip is subdivision surface. Have a go at that. Okay, so how would I go about making this? I'll make sure my cursor is at the center. Shift A, insert a plane. Add a subdivision surface modifier. And we get this. So I think I put it up to about three, maybe four. Then into edit mode with tab on the keyboard, or you come to edit mode down here. And then Control R will give you the loop cut tools. And then when you move over your shape, it will give you options of where to put it. I'm going to put it here. Left click to set. You can move it around but right click will keep it in the same place. And then I can just move this up and I have created this sort of curve shape like this. Back into object mode and I can set my shading to smooth as well and that will give it a nice smooth look. Okay, let's look at the next one. I'm gonna select it and put it on smooth shading in fact. There we go. Have a go at making that shape. After seeing the last one, this should be easier. Okay, let's have a go. Let's choose a new layer. Make sure my cursor's in the center. Shift A, mesh plane. Let's add our subdivision surface modifier and up the amount. So let's go into edit mode with tab. I'm in edge mode, so I've selected my edge here. I'm going to go to side view, which is three on my numpad, and then five on my numpad to go to orthographic. And I should then be able to press E to extrude and create some sort of interesting shape that goes around a curve. Now when I go back, with my middle mouse button and go to perspective mode with five on my numpad, I can see the model I'm creating. I don't have to go to side view, but it's just easier and you know that it's going to be in line. I could just extrude and pull them out as I see fit. And this is a great way of creating panels. So with that in mind, back to object mode, let's look at the next one. Your hint for this one is the solidify modifier. Also bear in mind that these are separate objects. Have a go at that. Okay, so I'll move these across to the side and Shift A, Mesh Plane. So let's add our subdivision surface modifier like the last times. Put that up a few. Go into edit mode and let's pull that one out. I'll go into side view and see where we're going. Control R, create a loop cut down there. Let's bring it all up so I'm back into object mode with tab, or you can change it down here, move it up. I'm only going to roughly do the same shape. Tab back into edit mode, let's move this back slightly, extrude and pull it down. Now you can see I've gone off on the corner because I wasn't in side view. So let's undo that and pull it down with the Z axis. Extrude and then press Z to constrain it to the Z axis this time. Extrude and then Y to constrain it to the Y axis. And let's extrude once more. Now I've done a couple of extrusions. If you want your line sharper, you will need to add more edge loops around that edge that you need. So here, if I bring these in close, it creates quite a sharp edge. Whereas here is a very rounded edge and they're quite far apart. If I put another one in here with Control R, it sharpens it up slightly and I can move that out and into position. Okay, so we've got a similar shape. Now you'll notice my curve comes around here a lot. So there's a lot of space between the edge here. And to smarten that up, I can press Control R and pull it across and put another one on the other side. And you can see I've sharpened this up slightly. I could also go this way as well. And that supports these edges in subdivision surface. It's looking slightly different from this, but I'm explaining things as I go, so hopefully you get the idea. Now, how do I make it a solid shape? Well, there's an easy way. I could, of course, go in to face mode with control tab, faces, and select all my faces and extrude them by the Z axis, and then sort of pull them out this way as well to make them solid, and that does work, but that's not the most efficient way. Let's deselect all those and undo what I did. And you'll notice actually that I've pulled these out in the wrong direction, so I probably forgot to constrain it to the z-axis then. I'll just quickly tidy that up. 
There, that's quite close. Now if I go back to object mode and I go and use my solidify modifier, so in the modifier panel, under the spanner, add modifier, solidify. And you can see already it's added a tiny bit of solidity. So let's put the thickness up, so the thickness option here, and that's quite similar now. Let's click smooth shading. Now you'll see immediately these go soft as it were. So we need to come over to our object data and click on auto smooth. So that will use that 30 degree angle to set things whether they're sharp or not. Okay, the last thing to do then is to click and add our cylinders. Shift A, mesh cylinder. Let's scale that down, scale in the Z, move it up into position, maybe a bit bigger. And mine obviously have a subdivision surface modifier on, so I can go to my spanner again, add modifier, subdivision surface. Now remember, n-gons at the end are not liked by the subdivision surface modifier, so we'll need to go in to edit mode, control R, and smarten this all up quite a lot. And this top face here with control tab, select that top face, E to extrude and scale it in. And now we have a much better looking rivet or whatever it might be. And we can also set that to smooth. There we go. And lastly, if I press full stop on my numpad to zero in on that, I can move it to the side, shift D to duplicate, and then move it across to the other side and we have two other things. So although it's not exactly the same, you hopefully get the idea of how you can create these sort of straps or panels with rivets in. Okay, the last shape I want you to look at is this one here. Now this looks quite complicated, but you'll probably get the idea when you either have a go or when you see me do it. It's less complicated than you think, but there are a few things you need to know about it. The tip for this one is think about your loop cuts for the sharpness of your curves. Okay, have a go at that. So I'll go into edit mode quickly and show you the topology. And you can see it there. I've actually added a mirror modifier as well. Although it doesn't make a lot of difference, it just means that I only really need to think about one half you can see that I've got edge loops supporting this little divot here. So let's look at how I would create that. Move that over to one side, cursor roughly in the center, and let's go Shift A, Mesh Plane. I'll just scale that up a touch, and I'll scale it in the X axis as well. I'll do the same thing I did over here, I'll create a mirror. So into edit mode with Tab, Control R. You can of course use the auto mirror, but I'll do it the long way. Control R, left click, left click again to set the position. Control tab to select the face, delete and then faces. Add modifier, mirror. And there's our other side. Okay, so I need to divide this up a bit. So let's control R. I'll have a couple of loop cuts this time. And in order to do that, I need to use my wheel. And I'll do the same this way. Control R, use my wheel. And then I'll go into face mode with control tab, select these two faces and drag them upwards. Okay, so I've got that rough shape. Let's put the subdivision surface modifier on and see what that looks like. So add modifier, subdivision surface, and turn that up just a touch. To about there, we'll be fine. Now I want a loop cut coming around here. Okay, so if I press Control R, I can't do it. And that's because my topology isn't set up in the correct way. So I'll right click and come out of that. When you're creating these sort of areas like this, you need, if I click on this one, edges to follow those kind of divots. So back to my shape, into edit mode. How can I do that? Well, well, I can press the inset button to create an inset. Press I on your keyboard. I can also untick this boundary section and that means the mirror where there's a boundary, it won't create an inset in it. It's probably a good idea to turn clipping on as well in the mirror. And now I can select this loop of faces and I can actually just extrude these down and suddenly it creates this sort of divot area. And now I can modify this in a special way, however I see fit. And I can create all sorts of interesting shapes with this. So maybe I'll select this face loop here and scale that out in the Y. And you can see that it's coming a bit closer to what we've got over here. So you can get the idea of how we can create these sort of divots. Also I can go to smooth shading and it's a bit closer. And if I ever want to sharpen those up, if I go into edit mode again, I can do another loop cut and sharpen some edges up like this. Also, if I press full stop on my numpad, I can zoom in there and get round to this side as well with my loop cut and pull that down as well. 
And now because I've got the right topology, I can then create these loop cuts all in this area. And now we've got a very sharp edge. So if I add another plane over here, just to reiterate that point, Shift A, Mesh Plane, and I subdivide it. This time I just press the subdivide button a couple of times here. Full stop to zoom in, and then Control Tab to select the faces. Select these four in the middle here, and pull them upwards. Put my subdivision surface modifier on, and I'll just quickly explain that again. You can see this middle bit is being pushed up, but as soon as I press Control R, it's not following a flow around those faces, so I can't create a loop cut. The only way I can do that is by creating an inset with I, and now I can go in and create a loop cut in this area. Then I can create my divot, put those subdivision surfaces up a bit more. That seems complicated, but the more you model, the more that will make sense. And this is a basic introduction of how topology works. Your edge flow needs to follow the edges of your model, so you can add loop cuts around it and sharpen edges up if you need to within a subdivision surface modifier. OK, a bit more complicated there. There'll be more episodes like this in the future. So do go on to gabbit.co.uk if you want more of those. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate all the comments. So do comment and let me know of any issues. You can also go to my Discord server and ask questions. Lots of helpful people on there. And I'm also on there regularly. And if you want to support me, there is a Patreon link on my website. Thanks for watching.